welcome back everyone. In today's video, I'm going to review Ford's quarterly earnings report for Q4 2023. Now I'm going to focus on the challenges that the company is facing in its Model E division, which is dedicated to electric vehicles. Let's get to it. Um, as you can see here, the stock is up 4% today, up 6% after hours. I guess the market liked the results. Let's find out. What was expected was earnings per share of $0.12 cents and sales of $43.1 billion. A year ago was $0.51, cents, so a steep drop year over year on sales of $44 billion. Actually, the drop is due to the um, UAW strike, so it's a one-time thing. I'm not too concerned about that. But since we're focusing on electric, may as well get to this quick article before we get to the results. Now, Ford cuts production of F-150 Lightning pickups on weaker than expected EV sales growth. Now, this was reported just recently, January 11th. Um, Ford is cutting production of the F-150 Lightning electric pickup after weaker than expected vehicle sales growth. While EV sales are growing in the U.S., the pace is falling well short of the industry's ambitious timetable, and many consumers are turning to hybrid vehicles instead. Ford said that about 1,400 workers will be impacted by the move to lower F-150 lightning volume production with the blah, 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 blah. Okay, so the Rogue Electric Vehicle Center is transitioning to one shift. That's actually really small. Usually these things run on three shifts. So one shift is one-third of its proper production. That's terrible. Effective April 1st. So it's not even taking effect yet. So approximately 700 employees will transfer to Ford's Michigan assembly plant, while others will be placed in roles in the road complex or the facilities in southeast Michigan. Some employees are expected to, to take advantage of the retirement incentive program agreed to in the 2013 UAW contract. Ford said a few dozen employees could be impacted um, at component plants supporting the F-150 Lightning production, depending on how many workers apply for the retirement program. Um, the company said it would provide placements for yada, 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 and it's creating nine. Uh, okay, don't care about the rest. Uh, before I continue, don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe. Also, I have a Patreon where you can actually go to to view my um, valuation models as well as my, um, my valuation models and my investment reports on various companies. Let's get to the numbers. That's what you all are here for, right? Okay, so revenue came in at $46 billion, that's up 4%. Adjusted EBITDA, or adjusted EBIT, $1.1 billion, that's down 59%, which was expected because of the UAW strike. Adjusted EBIT margin was at 2.3%, which is down 3.5 points. And adjusted free cash flow, $2 billion, and 29 cents earnings per share. These actually beat expectations, which are why the numbers are up, or why the stock is up after hours. Um, so let's get to the numbers that we all care about. So Ford Blue um, was profitable. For Model E is hugely unprofitable. That is a historic loss. We'll get to that in a second. Ford Pro is really profitable. Um, and then the full year results, you guys can go over that if you like. I'm going to skip that. Um, full year, I'm going to skip that as well. Okay, so Ford Blue has 7.5 full year, full year, full year. I don't care. I just want the quarterlies. Let's see here. Cash flow, cash flow, cash flow. So adjusted free cash flow for Q4 was $2 billion. Um, the company has about $29 billion in cash and liquidity. Or sorry, cash. And then liquidity is up here at $46 billion. Let's see. Net income was negative 0.5 billion dollars so negative 500 million dollars in net income or net loss rather so yeah um ford reported a net loss of 526 million dollars actually for q4 2023 um compared to a net income of i believe it's 1.3 billion dollars in the same period last year um the company's adjusted ebit which excludes special items was 1.1 billion dollars down 50 59 percent from q4 2022 um, the main reason for the decline was the poor performance of the Model E division, which posted a loss of $1.6 billion. 
That's almost triple the loss of Q4 2022. Now, the Model E division was created in March 2023 as part of Ford's restructuring plan, you know, Ford Plus, which aimed to accelerate the company's transformation into a leader in electric and connected vehicles. Now, the division is responsible for developing and scaling breakthrough EVs, software, and services, such as the F-150 Lightning, the Mustang Mach-E, and the Explorer EV. However, the division has faced several challenges, such as um, lower industry pricing due to increased competition, you know, from Tesla, and consumer, pref- and consumer preferences. Second is higher material and freight costs due to supply chain disruptions and inflation, and also investments in future EV segments and technologies that have not yet generated any returns at all. And they also have an issue with regulatory and legal uncertainties regarding EV standards and incentives. Now, Ford CEO Jim Farley said that the Model E division is still in an investment mode and that the company is confident that it will achieve long-term goals of becoming profitable and growing its market share in the EV space. However, that's difficult if you're cutting production. So you can say one thing, and apparently he's doing another, I think. Um, He also said that the division is working to improve the contribution margin of its current products and to leverage the software and connectivity capabilities developed by the division across the entire Ford portfolio. Now, on the other side, um, Ford's other divisions performed well in Q4 2023. The Ford Blue division, which focuses on internal combustion engine vehicles, you know, ICE cars, and connected experiences reported an EBIT of $813 million, which is actually down 48% from Q4 2022, but still profitable. Again, that's mostly due to the um, UIW issues. Now, the division that division benefited from strong demand and pricing for its iconic vehicles, such as the F-Series, the Bronco, and the Mustang. The Ford Pro division, which provides integrated solutions for commercial customers, reported an EBIT of $1.8 billion, which is up 2x from Q4 2022, and achieved a record margin of 12.4%. Now, that division saw robust demand for its Super Duty and Transit vehicles, as well as growth in its software subscription and services. The Ford Credit Division, which provides financing and leasing options for customers and dealers, reported an EBT of $280 million, which is down $1.3 billion from Q4 2022, driven by higher borrowing costs and higher credit losses. So these interest rate hikes are really, really, really hurting Ford. So overall, Ford's Q4 2023 results show a mixed picture of the company's progress and challenges to its transition to the future of mobility. The company expects to deliver an adjusted EBIT of $10 billion to $12 billion and an adjusted free cash flow of $6 to $7 billion in 2024 with improvements in all divisions except the Model E, which is actually expecting a loss of $5 billion. Billion dollars. Um, however, the company also faces significant risks and uncertainties, mainly the consumer acceptance of its EV products. Just nobody's buying their cars. Their EVs, the F 150s, they're just sitting there on the lots. Literally, literally. they're at about 144 days of inventory just sitting on the lots because dealers don't want to sell them. Dealers just don't want to sell them, and customers don't want to buy them. That's the main issue there. There's one more thing I want to point out before I close out the video, and it's actually very important, is to just look at these numbers. This last quarter showed revenue in their Model E division, which is the electric vehicle division. Wholesale units, 34,000. It declined from the previous quarter of 36,000. These are terrible numbers. Revenue, $1.6 billion, another decline from both of the previous two quarters. It's barely more than it was a year ago. Um, actually, no, it's identical to what it was a year ago. 1.6, 1.6. But even if that was identical, 
Look at the EBIT, EBIT from negative $600 million to negative $1.6 billion. That's danger level. That is danger levels. And the EBIT margin is 98, negative 98.2%. So basically what this means is the cars Ford is selling, its e division, EV division, cost Ford double the amount that Ford is selling it for. So for example, if you buy a Ford F-150 Lightning for, I'm just going to give a random number of $70,000, that vehicle would cost Ford $140,000. So that is a major problem. What Ford needs to do is they need to expand their manufacturing of these products. They need to leverage economies of scale. This is how Tesla became profitable. This is how Tesla um, expanded and became this, the monster that it is, is by increasing production and by increasing its leverage and increasing its economies of scale. And uh, by doing that, they're able to basically split the costs among more vehicles. And when you split the costs among more vehicles, that's how you achieve profitability in this industry. You cannot achieve profitability if all you're delivering and selling is 34,000 units. These numbers are just terrible for the Model E. Now the main issue here is Ford's delaying production for the Model E and sort of focusing more on its ICE vehicles. Now here's the problem with the ICE vehicles is this chart here from Clean Technica. You'll see that ICE demand and ICE sales actually peaked in 2017 at just under um, 100 million units globally. And it's just going down year after year after year. Um, ignore the projections. These are projections by Clean Technica. But you can see by 2023, just ICE, ICE vehicle sales keep dropping. And eventually, it will hit zero. ICE will, at some point, become unprofitable. And it's going to become at a point where the utilization in the factories for ICE vehicles aren't enough to sustain that factory and the vehicle in a profitable state. And there's going to be a point where EVs will take over. Now, Ford, thankfully, gives us this information. They actually split their Model E into a separate division. I wish you know, Ford, Toyota, and the others did the same. So props to Ford for that. But they definitely need to improve this division. They need to scale it, not um, scale it back. They need to scale up, not scale down. So, um, yeah, that's all for this video. If you enjoyed it, please hit the like button and subscribe to this channel for more content like this. Um, let me know in the comments what you think of Ford's Q4 2023 earnings report and its Model E division. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.